Mount Sinai faculty and staff, welcome. Parents, grandparents, siblings, spouses, congratulations. And to the class of 2018, of course, congratulations to you. And let's applause for these wonderful graduates and their families. <laughs> 50 years ago, the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai first opened its doors to teach and train the next generation of physician, physicians, scientists, and researchers. But it also had a bigger mission. This institution was created to train the next generation of leaders. Four years ago, we asked you to come here because we saw in you the promise of leadership. Now your job is to prove us right. Today, as you get your degree in medicine, let it also double as a degree in changing the world. As you accept your diplomas, I'll hope you will also accept the responsibility it brings with it. And that is a responsibility for change. That change will be tested in clinics and laboratories, in operating rooms and emergency rooms. It will be tested in the communities where you live and work. It will be tested in the private conversations you have with your patients. It will be tested in the public conversations we have as a country. Dialogues that require your participation. One of those conversations is about a crisis that demands our action today. It's a public health concern. It's an epidemic. And it needs your leadership. It's a conversation about what bullets do to our bodies and what guns do to our communities. But unlike other conversations we have, this is a conversation where critical data are missing, like how many assault rifles are in circulation today? Is a community safer with guns or fewer guns? How many gun incidents are intentional? How many are accidental? The answer is that no one knows. Why? Because for the last 22 years, for nearly your entire lives, the Center for Disease Control has been banned banned from researching gun violence in any meaningful way. That's unacceptable. While Congress recently tried to lift the ban on paper, we know that in practice there won't be any financial investment in public research in the near future to answer these questions. But gun violence is a bigger threat than Ebola or Zika, two epidemics that we were more than willing to address. We need to treat gun violence like the health problem it is. We should prevent, that's right. We should prevent gun deaths the same way we prevented deaths from smoking or car crashes or curable diseases. But because we don't have the evidence to develop solutions, it's too easy for gun advocates to say there just isn't sufficient proof. Before he died, the congressman who wrote the law that bans gun safety research actually had a change of heart. He admitted his mistakes. He asked that our country start to seek the truth. Few have listened. By choosing not to know the facts behind gun violence, we're saying as a country that we're afraid of the truth. Inquiry, inquiry is not only the foundation of science, it's the foundation of democracy. And when you leave here as doctors, one of your responsibilities will return to knowledge and put truth in its rightful place. After every tragedy, we're told it's too soon to talk about gun laws. We're told we should focus on mental health instead and lock up all those potentially dangerous patients, all those potentially dangerous people. As a psychiatrist, I can tell you that solution isn't that simple. In fact, it's probably not even constitutional. After every tragedy, the country sees the same images. But we, physicians, and you will see something else. The rest of the country sees the vigils. We see the victims. They see the television footage. We see the trauma. They will turn their attention to the next story. We see patients through their long and painful recovery. That's why we never need to become desensitized, and that's why we can't let up.
After every tragedy, we add a new name to the list of cities synonymous with gun violence. Newtown, Orlando, Las Vegas, Parkland. But gun violence isn't just about mass shootings. It happens every day. On average, in this country, 96 Americans are killed with guns every single day. Seven of them are children and teenagers. Even though we live in a relatively safe city with relatively strong gun laws, we also know this isn't someone else's problem. I know you all know how my dear friend and dean, Dennis Charney, was shot two years ago in August. We stood by his side. I cried with him. We prayed for him and his recovery. Today, I'm proud to share the stage with him. Dean Charney has spoken powerfully about personal resilience, the strength to move forward, to rebuild and appreciate the blessings of life. But what we need now is political resilience, the courage to seek the truth, ask questions, and act when the answers don't suffice. And as I said earlier, the answer isn't as easy as locking up the mentally ill. What we need to do is lock up the deadly weapons that don't belong in our communities. Since this health crisis visits us every single day, there's no question that we can't wait to answer it. And because you are our future leaders, the responsibility to change the hearts, minds, and policy to cure this epidemic will be yours because my generation has failed. That's why our degree in changing the world, that's what our degree is all about. I could stand here on graduation day and tell you as I thought about doing, that you shouldn't be afraid to fail. I could give you an uplifting talk. I could talk about encouraging you to fulfill your dreams. I might even remind you to wear sunscreen, but that's not my job. Then I wouldn't be fulfilling my responsibility as head of Mount Sinai, as a physician, as a parent, or as a citizen. I know many of you here today in our class have been stepping up and have been tried to be part of the solution. I'm proud of the student body and the researchers for what you have tried to do for your passion for this issue. When you leave here, I hope, in fact, I know you'll continue advocating for scholarly inquiry into gun violence so we can begin to prevent it. Gun violence shouldn't be the norm in America. We can change it. No one should be afraid to go to school. No one should be afraid to walk their street or the mall or the movie theater, or the house of worship. And no one should be afraid of knowledge, particularly not in learning institutions like Mount Sinai, but not in government institutions like the CDC, or Congress, or even the White House. Not anywhere in our country. We shouldn't be afraid to ask the hard questions. Your community needs you. Your country needs you. Your classmates and colleagues need you. From this moment forward, you're our hope. Thank you for what I know you'll do in the years to come.